This is the M1 Mac Mini, and this is quite possibly the M1 Mac Mini killer because it just came out and it has the highest end 5900HX processor with their best APU graphics at the same price. So today, we're gonna see not only how this performs in benchmarks, which I know it's gonna be amazing, but how it does in real world use, such as web browsing, photo editing, video editing, gaming, and more. As I mentioned, the prices are identical at $900, and this also has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD. Now, my Mac mini doesn't have a 10 gigabit either an option, which is an extra $100, but this thing does come with 2.5 gig LAN. Now footprint wise, they are about the same as you guys could see, but this AMD mini PC is quite a bit thicker. Now there is one other important detail and that is the fact that with this mini PC, you have to deal with this massive power brick, which it's all built right into this ultra slim mini Mac mini. It looks like this is a 120 watt power supply Whereas our Mac mini actually has one that's 150 watts built inside of it. But we all know that the Mac mini only uses up to 39 watts when it's completely maxed out. The HX90 mini PC has a ton of ports on the back. And as you see, we have multiple display outputs. So you're not gonna be limited to just two displays. Now, of course we don't have Thunderbolt, but it is odd that we don't have any USB type C outputs there. But if we spin it around, we do have just one built in along with extra ports on the front. So if you like ports, this thing has it. And the last thing in the box is the stand if you're somebody that prefers to have a vertical system. But enough talking, let's go ahead and boot this up and start comparing these. Here we are all set up and I'm running Geekbench 5 to start to get a baseline. And while this is running and I'm hearing that fan spin up now in the multi-core section, you guys see we have 16 gigs of RAM, we have a 5900HX processor with eight high performance cores that have a base of 3.3 gigahertz, but up to 4.6. Now the M1 Mac mini runs at 3.2 gigahertz flat and we have four high performance cores and four efficiency cores that don't really do that much. All right, we have our scores in. That's not too bad. For single core, we have 1321 compared to 1753. That's a difference of 32% in favor of the M1 Mac Mini, thanks to its efficient five nanometer chip. And on the multi-core side, we're also looking at about a difference of 20%. Once again, the M1 Mac Mini is winning. But keep in mind, this is a huge range of different tasks, including machine learning. So we will be testing out raw max performance. But first, I wanna go to speedometer, browser, benchmark, and let's go ahead and get running. This just shows how responsive the system is, especially for web browsing. The M1 Max are incredibly snappy, way faster than our other Macs that we have. We have a score of 149. That is right in line with the 2018 i7 Mac Mini, but the new M1 scores 236. It is a beast at being really quick and responsive. And now let's get serious. Let's start running the 10 minute Cinebench benchmark here, which is gonna test thermal throttling and also the maximum performance. This is where the Zen 3 chipsets are amazing. Let's see what, oh my goodness, that is crazy. Did you guys see that? We hit 63 watts, we're running at 54. You might be able to hear that. We usually denoise the audio, but that thing is getting loud. It's still sticking at 60, 54 watts right there. Now the M1 Mac mini runs at 15 watts maximum compared to 54 and hitting a peak of right there, 65. That is crazy. Now, as far as the frequency right now, we're running just over four gigahertz on eight cores compared to 3.2 on the M1 Mac mini. And it is flying through this test. As far as temperatures, we're looking at 90 degrees Celsius right here with that fan spinning loud. Let's look at it. Basically, the fan is maxed out on the CPU. So I'm guessing we're gonna get some thermal throttling here because that is just so much power in a small system. Now the M1 Mac mini, I think it maxes out like 64 or 67 Celsius under full load and it's completely silent because of how little wattage, how little power it uses. We are almost done and it just now dipped to 45 watts on the package here. It actually says 50 on the core is higher, but it was over 50 
that whole time running at 90 degrees Celsius. So it looks like it gives you a huge amount of performance and only at about the 10 minute mark is when it actually starts slowing down and gets itself cooler at 84, 85 degrees. And bam, we have our results. We're looking at 10,680 points. That is killing our Mac Pros 7,717 points. That is over 60% more CPU performance, which is crazy. Of course, it did use a lot more power. If we calculate the points per watt, we get 205 points per watt compared to 594. It's almost three times better performance for the wattage with the M1 Mac Mini. Now, before we go ahead and see how this actually translates to real world, say video editing, photo editing, let's take a look at the graphics. We'll start out with Geekbench and then we'll do the new gaming test. Let's switch over to Vulkan for better efficiency. Of course, we're using Metal on the M1 Mac Mini. Keep in mind, this thing has the latest and best integrated graphics chip that AMD makes with these new high-end, super nice processors compared to Apple's. This has the eight core unit and that is their interesting level M1 chip. Obviously, we're waiting for the M1X, but let's see how these do. All right, not bad. We have a score of 16,302 compared to 22,718 on the M1 Mac Mini. So that's a difference about 39% in a wide variety of tasks that Geekbench test. So now let's go ahead and do a test with some gaming. Of course, with the Mac, we don't have a lot of high-end games, but with Windows you do. So let's see how it performs running the brand new 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited test that will give us modern results. So unfortunately, no matter what I try, it keeps crashing on me. I made sure to have the latest updates for uh, graphics and it's just not working. So we're gonna go to plan B. We're gonna open up GFX Bench. We are gonna run 1440p Aztec Ruins off screen to keep it fair. All right, let's see what the results say. This is tiny on here because of window scaling. 32.35 frames per second. Now, guess how much the M1 does? You guys can comment down below. If you already know, you know. It gets 71.1. That is over twice as fast. Now, with all of that taken care of, let's go ahead and get into some more real world stuff. I'm gonna start out with photo editing. With all of those high performance cores, high frequency and high wattage, it should do a great job for photo editing and exporting. These are 42 megapixel raw files with a bunch of effects already added. And as we flip through, okay, it's pretty quick, probably about the same as the M1, maybe even slightly faster. Okay, that is great. Let's go ahead and open up a brush here, check out the smoothness, and uh, it's okay. It's a little bit laggy there at the start. The M1 does that as well but then you still get a little bit of lag. Okay, so there you go, now it smooths out. So it does take a little bit longer to smooth out and that is likely because of the graphics. Now let's go ahead and select all 50 of these images. This is where that AMD processor should come into its own. Let's hit the export button. I'm gonna start the timer and I'm curious to see what that 50 watts or more going to eight cores at four, over four gigahertz will do. And now of course on the M1, it's a lot lower, but we also have optimizations and eight channels of memory compared to dual channel, which is crazy that Apple pulled it off. You guys have to check out that and Antec article. All right, guys, we are rolling, uh, but based on the time, I don't know, it's gonna be interesting here. You guys can see the CPU's maxed out. It's actually running at 4.3 gigahertz on all eight cores, 100%. The GPU is fluctuating uh, based on what it's doing for graphics, but it's mostly CPU. RAM is at 13 gigs. Remember, both have 16 gigs of RAM. Let's see what the end result will be. All right, guys, we are almost done there. It's at 100%. Bam, okay. The fans are blasting. The CPUs are going at full speed. Our M1 Mac Mini, takes two minutes and 37 seconds to export all of these. Let's see what this gets. <laughs> it gets three minutes and 33 seconds. So the same amount of RAM, way more powerful CPU. You guys saw over 60%, it was like 64% more powerful in Cinebench. And that's when it's doing one task, maxing out all the CPUs. Here it actually ran faster as far as frequency, but still because of optimizations, 
because it's running through metal and the RAM setup the Apple is using as far as the channels, it smokes it. The extra CPU performance, the extra 54 watts instead of 15 doesn't matter. This thing just got smoked. That is crazy. So as far as smoothness, editing, very similar, but exporting absolutely wins. Same thing with doing previews. If you're gonna do um, the new AI upscaling feature, crazy. So now let's go ahead and close Lightroom and let's take a look at video editing. Let's start out by stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. We do this all the time. So it looks like it took almost 10 seconds there to start. Usually it's a couple seconds, but maybe it's longer with this setup. And bam, that is done. So the M1, now with, with DaVinci Resolve, it takes 30 seconds to do this. And that is with a few seconds of it starting up. This thing just took one minute and 10 seconds. So even if we take out the 10 seconds it took to start instead of three, four, five seconds, let's say, we're still at a minute. That is still twice as long as the M1 Mac Mini, which is crazy. Now, how about just playing back in the timeline when you're editing? This is standard 4K footage, a couple LUTs for uh, color corrections, and then some film grain. Um, okay, well, you guys see that right there. That is not good at all. The M1 plays this back perfectly so it's definitely not handling this very well let's see how long it takes to export this five minute project here and that took eight minutes and 32 seconds compared to three minutes and nine seconds so the m1 is more than twice as fast getting close to three times faster than the amd cpu now i wanted to make sure that i'm not doing anything wrong because I was expecting way better performance than this. So I double checked, the GPU is being used. It looks like we get access to up to 6.1 gigs of video memory from the 16 gig total there. I was using AMD, the decoders built into the AMD graphics card, which is what's faster. We're not using CPU encoding. That is just not great results. So let's switch over to H.265. This is more efficient. Maybe it will do better with this codec. So we're playing back here. Oh. You guys see that stuttering. It is not playing back any smoother. With the M1, this is actually faster now with the new decoders and encoders. Not great. Let's just do one more export. It does look like it's going a little bit faster now. Right at the gate, it's saying we have just over six minutes remaining. Let's go ahead and see how it will do. But let me tell you guys what. It doesn't matter if it's gonna take six minutes here because the M1 is absolutely insane with this. Six minutes and two seconds compared to one minute and 23 seconds. So I was gonna keep going. I wanna do some raw video editing, but no, I think I have to stop because it's just gonna get way too crazy. The distances, the performance difference is just gonna get greater and greater the heavier the projects are. So wow, what does that really tell us? Well. We can have an AMD system, seven nanometers, Zen 3, amazing, high wattage, unlocked, blaring, and we can have their best graphics, great deal, but it cannot touch the M1. Sure, in some benchmarks, it can beat it out, but when it comes to real world performance, when we're actually doing work with software, you can't touch the M1s. It is just incredible what performance they give you. Uh, but you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.